like how can we free ourselves of stigma? Because I think that is so deeply rooted in us as a culture for certain things. Like even me, as liberal and liberated as I try to be, I have a hard time talking about sex sometimes in certain circles. I have a 14 year old son. <laughs> If I'm going to bring up any sexual part, I mean, any private part is going to be like textbook uh, language, like penis, you know, and stuff like that. And he's looking at me like, you're weird, mom. <laughs> like, who says penis? <laughs> but, but that's just how I am. And I, yeah. I think of myself as being liberal, but I still don't feel that level of comfort mm-hmm. talking about sex so openly and so candidly as, as some people might. Mm-hmm. It's just something that's very... I'll give you, give you guys an example. As grown as I am, if I'm sitting in a living room with my father and we're watching a movie and I know a sex scene is about to come on, I'm going to get up and leave. <laughs> <laughs> we used to do the same thing. It's like, oh. I don't want to be sitting in a long, slow-mo <laughs> hey, on somebody's back <laughs> while dad's sitting here. And and Heavy panting. <laughs> <laughs> what do you look? Um, yeah. Maybe also change the channel for dad. Like, yeah, you're yeah, maybe. Old. I just wanted to see okay. that. <laughs> and that's fine. I'm not going to pretend that I'm always super liberal enough to, like, I'm getting there. I'm having more conversations yeah. with my own parents, and uh, that's okay. Uh, but outside, yeah, I'll talk about sex all day. <laughs> 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 um I'm probably the most liberal out of the whole bunch. I don't have kids yet, which helps, but <laughs> I talk to my parents about everything and I'm like, you scared? It's okay. Let's talk. So <laughs> hence this platform. And, and I really love just bringing that to the table of like, what do we do when we're speaking to our children? And I love what you brought up, Quandra. I never considered the effect that the prison industrial complex has specifically on black sexuality. Mm -hmm. Like this is something I've seen time and time again, you know, women, pen pals, you know, you love a man, he's been through a lot, he's in prison, he gets out, you know, like you could save him, Mm -hmm. you could change him, whatever the story is. And And also, um, it's been tied to the heroin crisis, which, of course, was um, much more prevalent in impacting our communities, but no one cared until Mm -hmm. middle class white people were also Mm -hmm. dying. So that's usually the story. And that's not to say that someone of middle class background, never touched drugs in their life, can't also get HIV. And when we talk about removing the stigma it's continuing to talk about it in general and getting the narrative changed. Um, So I love in general that we're coming to being more open around mental health. You've got celebrities talking about it left and right. I see commercials before NBA games Mm -hmm. of like, you know, celebrities, uh, athletes saying how therapies help them. You have Rihanna giving a shout out to therapy for black girls and Solange. And so the more that happens, I think there's this new generation up and coming that doesn't have the same shame of like, I need to go to therapy or find a support group. Um, There's this Generation Z or whatever we're calling the next one under that. Okay. um, (laughs) We'll figure it out. (laughs) We'll figure it out. Uh, I think as Black people, we are equally on board as the general population with what mental health awareness and therapy can do for us. Um, We're just presented with an extra layer of barriers with getting access, like maybe what's available to you is a clinician who doesn't look like you and then you're worried about a microaggression or having to educate them about whether or not your experience is real. Like if you wanna talk about racism at the workplace and how that's making you depressed and then your therapist tells you. I've heard horror stories. I would never say this. But your therapist may tell you something like, oh, are you sure that's what's happening? Have you considered your boss's um, perspective or something like that? And you're like, no, I was actually pretty sure that that was racism or something. Mm -hmm. So I think those are um, added issues we deal with. But the stigma, we're definitely breaking down in general mental health things. Just I don't know that we get there as fast with sexuality. Mm -hmm. Um, 
Um, thank you, thank you. I love that. And um, and to address what you were referring to earlier, Maya, regarding like speaking within families, one of the things that Mika Shirelles is embarking on is our family division mm -hmm. and creating healing circles for families that focus on ending generational trauma and cycles of abuse. Yeah. So like how to create those conversations in the family unit, starting at a young age and bringing children up with consent consciousness and mm -hmm. eradicated shame. Mm -hmm. Like, what does it mean to raise healthy children? Mm -hmm. um, I'd also like for you to talk a bit about some of the resources that are up right now for the San Francisco AIDS Foundation um, and any resources that you have as well, Kwanzaa. So, some resources um, within the uh, San Francisco AIDS Foundation, we, we have a, a, a lot of resources. We have um, things for people who are suffering from some type of substance issue. Um, we have things for trans people, people living with HIV. Um, we have it broken down into cultural categories. So we have like Latino program. We have the BBE, which is the Black Brothers of Esteem. Really? And they're older. They don't necessarily have to be older, but it, it's taken form of older black men who can be gay. They don't have to be. They're living with HIV. Um, and they come together and support one another. Um, we have Positive Force, which I manage, and it's for anybody, a, regardless of age, race, sexual orientation, who's also living with HIV. Um, and what I'm trying to actively do now is start a program for women of color, specifically African American women, because we just don't have that mm -hmm. at this time, mm -hmm. at the foundation, um, to support our women. Because one of my, my main things is I don't want our women to live in isolation. Yeah. And I feel just because where we are as a people right now, that's happening. I'm yeah. running into too many men and women who are black living with HIV, and they're all alone. They're by themselves, and they can be surrounded with people, yeah. but they're still alone because they're the only ones who are aware of their own struggle, and they don't have anyone to talk to, to vent, to... Yeah someone who can understand them. So that's something that I am starting. Um, so hopefully that will take shape very, very quickly. I just can't, I have a hard time finding women who's willing to talk to me on a weekly basis. They want, <laughs> they're like, I ain't trying to They don't want to come. They're, they're, like, they're, they're out there. there. They're, they're, they're definitely there. out there. And uh, I will, I will, I will get them. We will get yeah, that. We'll yes. See what we can do to support them. I will too. appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. I also want to bring up one thing. I brought my flyer. I don't know. So this is something that's going on. This is um, yep. It's it. This has some history. So it it's called our Plus Seminar, and what it is, it started back in the '80s, and it was a weekend retreat where people living with HIV would come, hang out, chill before they died. Mm -hmm. That's the history of the Plus Seminar. So that's not really what it is anymore. But it is a, a weekend event still that we hold where we come together, we network, we have presenters that come to, to give education. Um, and our next one is March 28th and 29th. So I would like, you have to register and everybody is welcome to attend. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Where can they register? Online. So if you go to San Francisco AIDS Foundation's website, you can register there for the PLUS seminar. And then, because we got two minutes, y'all, I'll make sure everybody. Quandra. Mm -hmm. So on another day, I'd love to talk all day about <laughs> breaking down stigma for sexual violence and That's partner good. violence uh, and the intersections, the way in which we as black people deal with that a little differently. Like we have the double bind, uh, um, this idea of like I'm black and woman at the same time or queer and black at the same time and maybe like a white person surviving it doesn't have to think about, oh, I don't really want to put another black man in prison. Mm -hmm. Or there's something about, there's an added stigma that my trans partner who's abusive to me is going to face mm -hmm. than if I was just a straight white person. Um, I think those are stigmas we have to break down and know that you're not alone in it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty full, as I said, in practice, if that sounded like you. There are a lot of other talented um, therapists of color that I trust. So I always like people to know about going to therapy for black girls. 
the searching by their state and also the therapist of color directory which is the bay area local um, website for a, a bunch of black and brown um, clinicians licensed who have openings so you can always look there for help if you're trying to survive trauma of any sort Thank you. Thank you so much. So again, you can learn more about PrEP and the PLUS seminars at sfaf.org. And you can also learn more about the ITCAST on Facebook, listen newly on Apple Podcasts, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also visit us at nikasharels.com. That's N-I-K-A-C-H-E-R-R-E-L-L-E-S.com. Uh, and you can find out more about Quandra's work. Can they email you, Quandra? They absolutely can. Okay, what's the email? So that's my first name, Quandra, Q-U-A-N-D-R-A, at sastherapy.com. How S-A-S-S therapy.com. Uh, all right, and join us next month for part two of Pleasure Negotiations, where we will have Spice back in the Abeji Lounge, and we will be talking about how to spice up your love life and navigate the springtime. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Get that lesson. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all so much. For thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, I also take the time to just thank our guests for tonight, Bush Mama Africa, for sharing that moon tea, that moon wisdom. Um, you can also connect with um, Bush Mama at bushmama.com, B U S H um, M A M A.com. You can also reach her at 510. 510- Four eight five two five seven seven, and now um, text is preferred. Um, also, to Bay in a Black, thank you so much for joining us um, to just share all the wonderful things that are happening with the launch of the Light Cipher Lab and the partnership of the African American Art and Culture Complex and RGA Agency. And thank you so much for the history that we are making for Black and Brown artists with an interest in the creative reality technology and to Nika Sherelle for the It Cast. Um, wonderful guests, Maya and Quandra. Thank you so much for being with us and Thank just sharing. And it's good to see you be yes. the ones to be the experts in what is shared and in our empowerment. And I'm happy to be with you all. I love it. <laughs> I love it. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. So thank you all so much. Thank you.